And the theory here in all the teachings is that as I, every time I let go a little bit of apathy, I automatically use courage to do it and I rise into more acceptance of self and you kind of rise up here. So every time I let go of one of these little emotions, In this video, we're going to be taking a look at releasing and the Ag Flap Cap chart. Um, in releasing, they have a chart in the Sedona method and letting go, releasing, and Lester Levinson's work. They have these charts, uh, they call it Ag Flap Cap. And Ag Flap stands for Apathy, Grief, Fear, Lust, Anger, Pride. And what we're going to be looking at specifically today is how to use this chart to spend more time up here in Courage, Acceptance, Peace in the way I like to look at it. Um, now, for those of you that have experience with releasing, you're gonna find this very valuable. If you don't, I'm gonna break it down in a simple way where you can use this chart to start feeling better today. And if you wanna learn more about releasing, um, make sure you check out Sedona Method, make sure you check out releasing itself, or make sure you check out some of our programs that we have here at Fearless by going to thefearlessman.com because I think it's one of the most powerful processes for helping to clean up your subconscious mind. Now, we're just gonna go into some basics today. To understand what I'm talking about, you need to understand the basics of what this chart is all about, because this is very powerful, guys. Learning to live the bulk of your life, encourage acceptance, peace, will change every part of your life. All those goals that are coming into your life will start coming into your life when you're up here uh, around 80% of the time. To me, what I'm always shooting for is like the 80-20 rule. Can I spend more and more time up here and less and less time down here? I used to be down here almost all the time. I lived pretty much down in apathy, which is like depression. And through years of work and study and processing of my subconscious mind and learning, I've actually learned to live more and more up here in courage, acceptance, and peace. Now, if you're wondering what the I stands for, this is what Lester Levinson said was the ultimate state, the imperturbable in state. So you, this is imperturbability. We're not really worried about that today. What we're looking at is right here. Now, the way I look at it is a lot of clients come to me and, they, and they're having trouble with women, they're having trouble with confidence, they're having trouble with social skills, they're typically living somewhere down here. And this area, the bottom three emotions, is a very heavy place. If you're primarily living down here in apathy, and you're always bouncing around, but if you're primarily living down here, you're going to have a lot of uh, sadness or depression in your life. This is going to be heaviness. This is pointlessness. What's the point? This is when you start numbing out. If I ask you what you're feeling, and you're like, I don't feel anything, you're probably in apathy. Because you really don't ever not feel something. So if you think you're not feeling something, that's probably some apathetic state. Almost everybody has some apathy in their life somewhere. But there's a, a small percentage of people that have overwhelming apathy all through their life. And that's some form of depression that needs to be, you really need to take a look at it. It's grief. This is when you come out of apathy and you begin to feel again. This is when you, all that pain, so a lot of times coming out of apathy hurts because when you go into grief, there's all these emotions that come up that were buried. In some ways it feels better because you're, you're starting to feel again. But in other ways, it's like, holy fuck, look what all this shit I'm feeling. And you want to put it back down in apathy, excuse my language. And you want to numb back out again. So apathy is really about overwhelm. Grief is, I, I don't know what to do, but there's got to be somebody that can help me. And apathy is, I don't know what to do. There's nobody that can help me. And the next one is fear. Fear is worry, doubt, nervousness, anxiety. And in fear, when we're typically not, you know, from fear, we're not going anywhere in life. We're scared of everything. There's this nervousness that's like, am I going to screw up? Am I going to do bad? Those tend to be, uh, there's a lot of anxiety ridden people because they have so much fear running in all these different parts of their life. These are all typically inward energies. Inward energies, okay? Uh, my sloppy inward. Hope you guys don't mind. I'm going to clean that up a bit. This is turning in on yourself. Apathy. Oh, poor. It's, I can't. I need help. I need to be fixed. I don't know what to do. There's nothing I can do. Fear. These are inward energies. When we get up here, these are typically outward energies. This is pushing. Another way you could say it. And again, today's video is ultimately going to be about up here because this is where we want to live. So we haven't got there yet. So in inward energies, there's a lot of worry, there's a lot of doubt, there's a lot of disbelief, there's a lot of, oh, well, 
this is my lot in life. This is Eeyore all the way down here. You know, the Eeyore float you know, from Winnie the Pooh. How does he do it? Uh, what's the point? It's, it's never gonna work for me anyway, something like that. So that's that Eeyore energy. Now when we get up here, this is wanting, desire, craving, needing. This I, is cockiness, arrogance, stuff like this. These energies are outward pushing energies. Down here, you try to do affirmations and they just, they're not gonna do anything. Like down here, I'm like, I'm happy. My life's good. I'm a millionaire. But your whole nervous system's going, yeah, right. Your life sucks, okay? And that's the feelings and the emotions that are driving all the thoughts, because these are the emotions. In here though, especially when you start getting into anger and pride, you can start getting a lot done. That's the pushing energy. And you can see this in really some really successful people. You see it a lot in athletes. You see it a lot in some famous people. I mean, think about the athletes out there right now that are, think about like a Kobe Bryant or Shaquille O'Neal or uh, Mike Tyson and, or people like this. How much pride do they have? They have a lot of pride and they can make a lot of money. And they have a lot of success. This energy is a win, lose energy. Okay. That's what it's all about. There's got to be a winner and there's got to be a loser. Anger is, 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 can be destructive and it can be successful. Most of the time it's destructive. Some people actually use their anger to get a lot done and create some success, but then they tend to take themselves out at a certain level. So when you see people, uh, successful people that have a lot of anger, I know that um, Dennis Rodman is a great example of an athlete that was really talented that took himself out because he kept getting angry a lot or Mike Tyson and they couldn't control their anger and it would take them down. So pride tends to work better than anger, but people get stuck at pride all the time. The place you really want to live is courage, acceptance, peace. This is where people like Branson, think of Richard Branson, the, the billionaire that owns Virgin Airlines. He lives more in a courage and accepting energy. And his life is easy. It just flows. Here, your, your life is about battles. Here, your life is about ease. When you think of Richard Branson, you think of here. When you think of somebody like Donald Trump, I think of here, more pride. When I think of somebody like Hillary Clinton, I think of here, more anger. And so you could see the difference in the results in their life and where they're at. As you go down the scale, this is where things get really, this is the average person in the world. This is where things get messier. A lot of people in the world that don't like their lives, that are just going to work day to day, grinding away at normal jobs, tend to live down here. Now, in releasing, if you understand it at all, it's a very simple process, but it goes very deep and it gets deeper and deeper. And the more you do it, the deeper you go. And the goal here is to release all of this ag flap so that all that's left is courage, acceptance, peace, and ultimately, and in, in, in eventually, imperturbability. That would be the ultimate state, okay, of, of being. And the theory here in all the teachings is that as I, every time I let go of a little bit of apathy, I automatically use courage to do it and I rise into more acceptance of self and you kind of rise up here. So every time I let go of one of these little emotions. So what happens is people start to learn this and every day they're releasing down here. That's where they're taught to release. Can you welcome the fear? Can you welcome more fear? Maybe you have a lot of fear about your job yeah, because you got a new job and you're scared to go to work. And can you welcome that fear? And can you welcome more of that fear? Now, can you let go of some of that fear? Because you can't let go of something you haven't welcomed. And this is kind of the process. Can you welcome it? And can you let it go? If you want to learn more about that process, check out, uh, our, again, our releasing programs or check out Sedona Method or, or releasing uh, as a whole. And they'll teach you how to start letting go. It's a very powerful process. and can be very successful. But every once in a while, uh, and actually more often than I like, I run into people that do a lot of releasing down here and they do it day in and day out. Maybe in the beginning they get results. And then what happens is after a while, they just get frustrated and frustrated and frustrated and frustrated. And so it's, it's pretty much always the same problem. And this is what solves this problem. And also it's just a great practice, especially if you don't know much about releasing, just start taking up this practice right away because it can be a life changer. You see, the problem is with law of attraction and law of vibration. I saw this really quickly when I started to work at this because I ran this through the, the, the natural laws. And if you haven't seen my videos on the natural laws, check that out. And when you put your primary focus down here, because you're doing all the releasing down here, this becomes your whole world. 
if the whole time I'm saying, can I welcome fear and let it go? Can I welcome grief and let it go? Can I welcome apathy and let it go? Can I welcome lust and let it go? But I never spend much time up here. Your subconscious mind doesn't have a relationship to courage, acceptance, peace. It can never get out of down here. It can never actually start existing up here. And the reason that is, is because by law of attraction, every time I let go of fear and I'm heavily focused on fear, maybe the bulk of my energy is saying, I got to get rid of this fear. I got to get rid of this fear. I got to get rid of this fear. Then every time I let go of more fear, I have to find more fear because what you focus on expands. Um, same with the reticular activating system of your brain. What you focus on expands. So if you're fo constantly releasing on grief, you're going to find more grief. You see, what I realized very quickly, and this was something that Lester Levinson, the guy that actually came up with this, actually did it a little different than it's being taught today. When he first figured this out, he said to himself, what does love feel like, which is part of acceptance and courage? He said, I really just want to be happy. And happiness is all about love for him. And he said, it's when you're giving away love that you're ultimately the happiness. So he said to himself, what does love feel like? And he went through every memory he had of love and he sat with them and he meditated on them until he could get a little experience of love because he was miserable. He had been unhappy his whole life. And when he got this experience of love, he said, now, when I've got the, now that I've got this experience of love, what feels better, being loved or giving away love? And he realized that being loved was temporary because people's emotions and mood change but giving away love, he could control that. So he said, being loving is the key, which is a part of courage and acceptance. So he found all the places in his life he was being loving, all the memories, and he sat with those and meditated on those till he could recall them at will. And then the next thing he did was he took a look at his emotions. And the first emotion that came up was all this anger he had. Matter of fact, it was bordering on rage. This rage for this doctor that gave him a, a serious diagnosis for an illness. And so what he did was he sat there and he went and looked at that rage and he said to himself, I want to do this as an experiment. And uh, he said, can I? And he asked his subconscious mind, not his analytical mind. He asked, he just kind of relaxed a little bit. And he said, can I let go of this rage or hate or anger? I can't remember which emotion it was and replace it with love. So you see, he's literally starting up here. This is where it all started. He didn't start down here. He's starting up here and saying, can I let go of this to have more of this? That changes the law of attraction. He literally said, can I let go of, of this to have more of this? Now your focus is on this and you're only looking at this long enough to let it go so you can get more of this. Whereas most people never look up here and they just spend all their time down here trying to let go of this. And by law of relativity, you can't do that. If this is all there is, you can never let it go. Only once you acknowledge this can you do that. And that's the mistake everybody's making. You have to reverse that order. And so when you're feeling, when he was feeling the anger and he said, can I let go of this and replace it with love? Suddenly he, he said he felt this like sensation in his chest and the anger started to dissolve. He didn't get love, but what he got, he said, was resentment, what he felt was lighter than the anger. And then the next thing he did was said, can I replace the resentment with love? And the resentment, which is part of anger, burned away and pretty soon, all he was was felt love for the doctor, which was very accepting. He was able to look at the doctor and say, I'm no longer angry at him. It just kind of dissolved away in his body because he tried it as an experiment. So the man, Lester, spent the next three months doing that with everything, nonstop, 24 hours a day, changed his whole life. His body actually healed. And instead of dying, which the doctors gave him a diagnosis of dying, he actually lived to be close to 90, 80 some years old, late eighties. Um, and he's supposed to die at around 41. So what I want to say to people is that what you really want to start with is what he started with, getting in touch with these upper emotions. What do they feel like? Do you have any idea? Do you spend much time each day getting in touch with them? I currently have students every day read all the subtle emotions that go into these upper emotions and meditate on them just a little bit. Even if it's for a few seconds, each one, find the ones that connect with you. You see, courage has a whole host of other emotions that go with it. 
There's a sense of adventure and courage, a sense of being alert, a sense of being alive. And acceptance has a whole host of emotions. And if you look at these emotions and you say, can I remember a time I ever felt alert? And what did that feel like? And how good did that feel? Where did I feel it in my body? And you meditate on that for a second, even if it's only 1%, a tiny little bit of feeling, that's really, really important for good releasing. Or can I remember a time that I felt uh, alive? Um, can I remember a time I felt uh, willing as we move up here more? Can I remember a time I felt um, acceptance in general? Can I remember a time I felt loving? And as you explore all these emotions, there's a lot of them, then, and you start to get in touch. If you only get in touch with a small percentage and every day you keep doing it inside of a week, inside of a month, you're gonna start to realize that you have a greater relationship to these than you ever realized before. And it's gonna start to become more conscious. As the relationship to these emotions become conscious, then when you go down to release these emotions, it becomes easier. Because now your subconscious knows, I'm letting these go to have more of this. And it starts to expand in your life rapidly. Everybody wants to spend all their time down here. But I'm gonna encourage you to start by spending a lot of time up here. Matter of fact, if you're a beginner at Sedona Method, just meditate on this in the beginning. And if you do that every morning, for say a half hour every morning, watch how that alone will begin to change your life. You'll start to see the world a new way. And then it'll become so much easier to let go of all of this because now your body gets it. It has a place to go. So with that said, I'm gonna encourage you to get a chart of emotions that it breaks down all the subtle emotions that go with these. And you can get that through the Sedona Method book. You can get that by going online, looking up the Ag Flap Cap chart of emotions, and you'll see how big the list really is. This is just a basic list. And I'm gonna encourage you every day to start a practice for a month of just meditating on these emotions for a little bit, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 10 minutes, until you can start to feel your body waking up with that feeling. And when your body begins to wake up, it's gonna start to change your life then you start your releasing. And that's the right way to do it. And after you begin your releasing, if you find that you're spending too much time down here and you're getting really heavy and you're not getting good releases, come back up here for a while again. And as soon as you start to feel lighter again, from that lighter feeling place, come back down here and start working again. And that's the key to changing your life with releasing, especially if you're stuck. So I wanna thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you liked it and you got these principles and you really understand them. If you don't understand releasing, I encourage you to learn more about it. It's one of the most powerful tools we have. Go to thefearlessman.com. Uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, releasing is one of the few things that really, well, one of the things that had such a radical impact on my life. I never give it up. I do it every day of the week. I do a much, I do a very deep versions of this. So again, make sure you check out releasing, make sure you check out fearlessman.com. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and make sure you put comments in the video. I've been thinking more and more about just doing some videos where I do some releases and uh, take you through releases so you understand the process. And so if you're interested in something like that, make sure you put that in the comments too. Uh, we respond to all the comments, we get video ideas from the comments, so they're very important to us. So with that said, also remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video.